friends and welcome to another Before You Read lecture. This is another lecture in our study of the book of Ezekiel, the Old Testament prophet, the show and tell prophet. And this lecture will concern chapters 25 through 32. And uh, this part of Ezekiel is similar to what we would see in other of the prophetic writings, which it's it's God's word of judgment or God's word of uh, of warning, uh, the oracles against foreign nations, as the Harper Collins Study Bible puts it. Um, so the, the the prophet Ezekiel turns his attention from Israel and Judah, from from God's chosen people, um, which has really been the dominant theme in chapters one through twenty four, and uh, Ezekiel shifts the focus to a number of nations that are around Israel, around this region. It's uh, probably important for us to just name these nations at the beginning of a lecture like this, and then uh, we'll talk through an outline of this material, and then as I've done in the past, I'll offer just a few words of, of guidance, some reading strategies, really some questions for you to consider as you read. As I noted, this is a section entitled, The Oracles Against Foreign Nations. And really, we hear the prophet Ezekiel speaking directly to a number of nations or smaller Syro-Palestinian states. So maybe not full kingdoms or nations yet, but uh, we would think about them as confederacies or, or states, smaller states that are near or around the, the Holy Land. Uh, Egypt is, is probably the, the largest uh, nation addressed, at least in terms of the amount of space Ezekiel devotes to talking about Egypt. But we also hear words of judgment against Ammon, Moab, Edom, Philistia, and Tyre. And one of the important things to keep in mind as you read this material is that the prophet Ezekiel, or, or God speaking through the prophet Ezekiel, will remind Egypt or some of these other foreign nations of previously great nations, exactly like Assyria, for example, that have also fallen. And so the idea is that God's judgment on these surrounding kingdoms is assured because of God's judgment in the past on a nation as great and as powerful as Assyria, which has also fallen down. These nations form uh, what we would call a geographic arc around the land of Judah. What is interesting is that many of these words of judgment, these oracles against the nations, actually are, are, are dated after the fall of Judah in 587 BCE. So we know that Judah fell to Babylon in 587 BCE. That was the that was the the sort of the second end of Babylon's capture and and deportation of Judah, and and so we we see that a number of these oracles are actually written after the fact. I think that that historical or chronological reality is important for us to consider as well as we consider the the sort of pastoral or theological in implications of these oracles against the nations. And, a, and a, a final thing to say just in general is that, as the HarperCollins Study Bible Notes put it, uh, these words of judgment really set the, set, the, set the stage for God's words of promise and the, pro the promise of well-being and restoration for Israel. And so we can see this, this arc of, of judgment against Israel and Judah and an assured judgment of those who surround Judah and Israel. And then uh, th that all sets the stage for God's promise of judgment or promise of restoration. I always think outlines can sometimes help reading, especially when we know sort of how to chunk or, or group materials. And I think that's in, uh, particularly important um, in this section because there's a number of, of countries and, and states mentioned and it can sort of be hard to keep up with everything that we're reading. And so uh, an outline that, that I found in the HarperCollins Study Bible, uh, I'm going to offer to you now as a sort of uh, as a framework for understanding this part of Ezekiel. So the first major section is, is really 
um, Ezekiel 25 through 28. Uh, and, and this is, uh, we can break this down further in seeing that uh, in chapter 25, we have four proclamations against four different nations, Ammon, Moab, Edom, and Philistia. Then uh, in uh, most of 26 through 28, uh, we have these uh, declarations, these proclamations against uh, Tyre and uh, Tyre's king or, or ruler. Uh, also in 28, we have um, pro pronouncements against Sidon. And then in Ezekiel 20, 28 verses 24 through 26, we have what we could regard as a conclusion, a, a sort of, uh, uh, it, it definitely is a transitional section in this part of Ezekiel. And then, uh, really, the next section is from 29, verse 1, all the way through the end of 32. And these are all pronouncements against Egypt. The editor of the HarperCollins Study Bible for Ezekiel finds seven of these different pronouncements um, that can, can last as long as 16 or 20 verses and as short as just three or four verses. And the, the pronouncements have a variety of flavors and shapes to them. Uh, some are more poetic, some are more prose-like, um, some are use imagery more, some um, are, are more uh, direct in their language. And so uh, it, it's important, I think, for our purposes to notice that, that Egypt really gets the bulk of the critique in chapters 29 through 32. Um, Tyre is also uh, sort of critiqued, and it's important that Tyre is, is engaged. Um, but then these other nations sort of, uh, they're almost a, you know, a, an add-on or a derivative to uh, God's concern or Ezekiel's concern about these major countries, Tyre and Egypt. Here are a couple of questions, a couple of suggestions for you to consider as you read this material. And uh, in addition to the, to the outline that I've just provided, I, I hope that this gives you some uh, sense of uh, how to engage this material. The first thing, it's not a question, it's really uh, uh, an encouragement, which is pay attention to the role of imagery and vivid description. Um, use your imagination. Try to enter into the scenes that are being described. Some of these parts of Ezekiel are very vivid, particularly around the realities of warfare, but also about, uh, about, about nature and about landscapes and uh, those sorts of things. So pay attention to the imagery. Flowing out of that focus on imagery, my first question is, what does judgment look like? And what does salvation look like? How are these two realities characterized? What does judgment look like? How do, how do we know that a, that a country or a people has been judged? And what might salvation look like, on the other hand? A, a, a second question for you to sort of just be tracing along the way is, what is what's God's beef with the surrounding nations and their leaders? What is, what is the problem? Why are these nations and peoples guilty um, or, or liable for God's judgment? And then the third question is, is probably the most constructive question. And that is, what does all of this have to say to us today? Um, some of these, if you are reading in a study Bible, some of these pronouncements can be dated with, with an amazing amount of precision date, based on the date formula that Ezekiel provides. And, and so how do we make sense of these very historical, very contextualized uh, words, and how do they apply to us today? So again, as you read, Pay attention to the, the imagery and vivid description. Uh, ask what does salvation look like? What does judgment look like? Uh, what is God's problem with the surrounding nations and with their leaders? And what does this all say to us today? Well, I am looking forward to discussing this more with you. I am hopeful that we will have a fruitful and rich discussion as we explore these materials together. But for now, happy reading.